This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. On July 10th, 2019, the Emergency Medical Minute and CarePoint hosted a panel with 10 speakers on a wide variety of topics. This is Dr. Neil O'Connor with a talk on posterior circulation ischemia. Thank you and welcome. Who here is this? this they're, they're new to CarePoint. This is their first CarePoint event. We've got a couple of new hires here. So guys, stand up. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to CarePoint. All right. I know. Yeah, we met. So who here is super comfortable with dizziness, syncope, and coma? <laughs> I'm putting my hand down as well. So I've spent a lot of time with this, with our neurologists, um, kind of digging into, you know, what, you know, what looks like posterior, you know, circulation ischemia, the dizzy patient that you will see 20 times in a shift. Um, and, you know, what is the high risk features that we need to know about? Sort of what are the red flags? And although we don't have a neurologist here, the, the Blue Sky guys have been very helpful with this, especially Judd Jensen. And I really wanted to distill this down to, to what you need to know, what you can do within a five to 10 minute you know, period, rather than you know, doing this esoteric neuro, neurologic exam. So um, I don't have any slides, I'm just working off a piece of paper. Uh, a couple of quick points. The NIH stroke scale is heavily weighted towards anterior circulation and dominant uh, hemisphere. Uh, as emergency providers, we are a complaint-based specialty. We base our workups off the complaint. Um, and therefore, PCI, posterior circulation ischemia, is dizziness plus, syncope plus, altered mental status plus these neurologic findings we're going to talk about. Unlike the anterior circulation, really, the posterior circulation is an exam of the cranial nerves. Um, so when you say, you know, your, if your macro says cranial nerves 2 through 12 intact, take that out. All right, we're going we're gonna to really dig into what, you know, what constitutes a, a good exam. Um, and, there, and really, that's the assessment of the brainstem and the uh, midbrain. And then finally, you know, we've talked about you know, doing the CTA, CTCTA, understand that, you know, any type of stroke diagnosis is clinical. Many times the imaging studies are negative. And really this, the strategy around uh, CTCTA only excludes bleeds and LVOs. And, and CT in general is very insensitive for the detection of, of posterior circulation stroke. So it is very important we all understand the, the clinical features that determine high risk. And, uh, and so historically, the, the high risk features are abrupt onset, presence of headache or neck pain, if you have balance problems without vertigo. Uh, and then we see this or we hear about this all the time, blurred vision. Blurred vision means a lot of different things. And you really, it's like dizziness. You can't say, is the room spinning or do you feel un imbalanced? You have to say, when you say blurred vision, what do you mean? Because it could mean double vision, it could mean a hemianopsia, it could just mean monocular symptoms, it could be binocular. So really getting into that makes a big difference on how you differentiate these patients. And there, there are specific cases that we've had over the years. Um, recently, and it was, it's a settled case so we can discuss it, a patient came in with blurred vision while he was driving. And he described, and, and it was described in the HPI as a, really a hemianopsia, but the symptoms resolved and the CTCTA was negative. And unfortunately, the vertebral artery dissection was missed on CTA. But it was essentially a TIA with a hemianopsia. And, and recognizing that as a high-risk feature and really defining a posterior circulation ischemic event it was, was unfortunately missed. Um, the the uh, presence of dysphagia or dis difficulty swallowing is very important. The most common brainstem infarct is what's called Wallenberg's or lateral medullary infarct. 
So by far, like probably 50% of, of brainstem infarcts are Wallenbergs. And, and dysphagia, the, the, the nuclei for the cranial nerve 9 and 12 come out of that area. So your, your ability to swallow um, from the posterior and anterior come from that area. Um, so, understand, so if you ask the patient, can you swallow normally, we'll really address that. Um, so make sure you, d you detail that in your history as well, in your f as, well as your physical. Uh, as far as those historical details that reduce the, the high-risk features, anything that, any history of vertigo uh, would, would indicate that's more likely to be peripheral and presence of hearing loss or tinnitus, again, sort of um, point to a, 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 a peripheral etiology, the uh, acoustic nerve. So what are the features we need on the neurologic exam to really address? So dizziness, you know, plus. So ataxia, can the patient walk? The biggest thing we see is we, we do a, uh, a stretcher exam. We don't get the patient up. We don't even sit them up. So if we can get them up or watch them as they're coming into the ED and as they're being wheeled back, say, can you walk? If, they, if you can't get them up because they're all lined up, have them sit up. If they can't hold the balance, it's called truncal ataxia, very, very high-risk feature. Appendicular um, ataxia is finger to nose or heel to shin, uh, also very important. So those are the ataxia findings. Um, uh, Horner syndrome. So that, uh, who knows what Horner's is? There's, there's actually two bikes outside. So whoever can name the three features of Horner's gets two bikes. Anyone? He wins. <laughs> you get Dylan's bike. <laughs> All right. So Horner syndrome. You will see a droop of the eyelid. Who wants neuroanatomy here or not? Oh, damn it. Okay, JP. Okay. The, 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 the fibers, the, the presynaptic fibers for the, for the uh, synaptic chain, uh, the sympathetic chain starts in the thalamus and then runs through the uh, lateral medulla. Uh, so that's the, how they get knocked out in a brainstem infarct. So um, when you see a Horner's or if you look for a Horner's, that's a clear sign of, of a brainstem infarct. Visual fields. So we often test for visual fields with you know, wiggling the fingers, that's really not the way to test for visual acuity in the peripheral. You know, from an evolutionary standpoint, our peripheral fields are, detect are motion detectors, all right? They're not really designed for acuity. You know, think of the, you know, the primate in the tree eating a banana, but there's a, you know, a lion coming up. We're designed to see, you know, in our peripheral fields, motion. So when you're testing visual, you know, sort of peripheral vision, Use fin number of fingers and make sure you're covering the eye and making sure you're covering your own eye and make sure the patient's not looking away, you know, towards that. But don't use motion. Use number of fingers. That's a much more sensitive test, or specific, I should say. Um, and then uh, gaze testing, uh, the cranial nerves, you know, three, six, uh, you know, rise from the midbrain. Very important. And is everybody familiar with the HINTS exam? So the HINTS exam really isn't a, a, a test of the CNS, it's a test of, or it's a test of the uh, vestibular system. So think of it as uh, two sides of the same coin. When you test these other nerves, especially the cranial nerves, you're testing the brain or the, the, the CNS. When you do the HINTS exam, you're really testing the vestibular system. You're looking for peripheral etiology with that. And there are three elements to it. There's a head impulse, nystagmus, and then test of skew. And the, it's, it is confusing because some of the tests you want to be normal, some of them you actually want to be abnormal as they point to a peripheral etiology. So I won't get into the neuroanatomy so much, but understand that in a, any of the things that, any of the three components in a HINTS exam that are, quote, dangerous, I won't say abnormal because some abnormals point to peripheral, but anything that's dangerous, really, you're done. It, it's an or, not an and. You don't need all three, you just need one of them. So if you have vertical uh, nystagmus, if you have uh, skew, or if you are actually able to track with head impulse testing, those all indicate a central etiology. Um, so you know, understand that, that you're actually testing vestibular 
but it's a good complement to your cranial nerve exam uh, for the CNS. What percentage of people do you think are actually including the HINTS exam, and do you feel like that's now standard of care that we all need to be doing that with a dizziness exam? So first and foremost, let's, let's back up and say what percentage of our patients have anterior circulation strokes, what percentage have posterior circulation? And in general, from a, from a stat standpoint, about 85% of the diagnosed strokes are anterior, and probably about 15% are posterior. So within that milieu, is it standard of care to do hints? I would say probably not, but is it sort of optimal care? Is it, you know, again, you could do this exam in five minutes or less, and you can really determine who's high risk and who's low risk. And even if you can't determine all of the elements of the HINTS exam, even determining nystagmus or skew or hand impulse, I think, has value. I guess I would say when you know you're calling a stroke alert, I don't know that it's as important. It's more important in terms of isolated dizziness presentation. Do you feel like right. that should be standard? If in a, you have maybe somebody an elderly who's, person with dizziness. Fair point. If somebody is you know, dizzy and wildly ataxic, you don't need to do the HINTS exam, right? You're going to call a stroke alert. If somebody has a gaze deviation and they're, they have slurred speech or dysphagia, you're done, right? So any positive on your, or your initial exam, you don't need to do hints. But if you're still sort of searching for that next level, I think you're, you're, you're right. Let's, you can do the hints exam. All right, that's all I've got. Any questions? I want you to turn around and take a look at the CarePoint jersey. If you guys haven't, haven't ordered it, for sale. it's for sale, <laughs> along with the bike. <laughs> and again, I, I welcome everybody. And uh, uh, here we go, back to Nick. All right, thank you, Neil. <laughs>